Diddy Kong might actually be evil. Diddy Kong the cute pantless monkey who first appears in Donkey Kong Country isn't the sweetheart that you might think he is. Redditor slash you slash Jobs believes that Donkey Kong is suffering from a problem of bacchanalian excess. Try as he might, he can't stop stockpiling bananas. King K. Rule tries his best to help DK by regularly confiscating his stash, but there's always someone else around to enable the ape's problem. That's where Diddy comes in. Time and again, Diddy Kong helps DK score more bananas. These fruits will inevitably be left to rot while the crew is distracted by their assault on K. Rule. Apparently, Diddy is desperate to be accepted by the Kong family, and will go to great lengths to gain his uncle's approval. Donkey Kong Island is a cargo cult. A fascinating theory about the Donkey Kong mythos, that the two main islands in Donkey Kong Country Kong Island and Crocodile Isle took on humanoid traits because they were actually cargo cults or civilizations that developed quickly after coming into contact with more technologically advanced societies. The creator of this theory believes that the original Kongs colonized Kong Island after their ship wrecked on one of its beaches. In the beginning, the family possessed little more than a single DK necktie, which they treasured for its connection to the human world. As items continued to wash up on the island, the family of primates began to take on progressively more human characteristics. The same evolution was experienced by the crocodiles on Crocodile Isle. However, they were recipients of items from a more militaristic society, which led to them becoming totally evil. Donkey Kong Country can be seen as an allegory of the Spanish-American War. Sure, Donkey Kong Country is a video game about a family of primates fighting a bunch of pirate crocodiles, but it might also be an allegory for the horrors of capitalism that America thrust onto unfortunate foreign nations after the Spanish-American War. When the war ended in 1898, America gained control of Cuba and Puerto Rico, and used military force to help the United Fruit Company gain take over local farmlands. By doing so, they created a monopoly on the local fruit trade, which proved disastrous for small farmers. A popular theory suggests that Kong Island is a stand-in for the Caribbean countries that were occupied by the U.S. military, and that King K. Rule, the malevolent crocodile antagonist represents Teddy Roosevelt. In the game, all of Kong's bananas are stolen by K. Rule and his pirates, and it's up to the player to see that DK and his people don't starve to death. While there weren't technically any pirates in the Spanish-American War, it's likely that the developers used alligator pirates to represent the American military, who regularly plundered the locals' supplies. Donkey Kong Games story can be understood as a non-linear narrative. According to Redditor slash U slash Leonhart 623, the first games in Donkey Kong's extremely confusing timeline are those included the Donkey Kong Country series. These titles tell the story of King K. Rule's attempt to jumpstart his oil empire on Kong Island, and the inadvertent war that is sparked by his endeavor by fighting off K. Rule. Kong and his family destroy the island and its fragile ecosystem. DK is the only Kong to survive the brutal war, which has terraformed the island into an industrial hellscape. Left with no other option, DK takes over K. Rules still functioning oil fields, and spends the remainder of his days climbing up. That's when the lone mystery. Kong decides to kidnap Pollen, which leads up to the events of the Donkey Kong arcade game. 
Donkey Kong is maybe the head of a drug cartel. Does Donkey Kong subscribe to the 10 Crack Commandments? Reddit user slash u slash stop the amazing certainly thinks so. His theory posits that the Kong family is actually a crime syndicate in charge of an illicit banana ring. The Redditor states that the bananas hoarded by the Kongs have life elongating properties and that regularly consuming 100 bananas extends one's lifespan. This explains why the Kongs never seem to age, and why they'll do anything to get their bananas back. Mario may have hired DK to fix up what is now Kong Island. Editor slash you slash has a fascinating theory that Donkey Kong Island wasn't the birthplace of the Kong family. Instead, they posit that the island was owned by K. Rule. After taking petitions from contractors, he decided to hire Mario, who called in the Kongs to help with manual labor. After refurbishing the island, K. Rule had plans to enslave the Kongs, but things went awry at the last minute. Donkey Kong flipped out and kidnapped Colin, which led to three decades of racing, jungle climbing, and mayhem. Believe it or not, this Redditor's theory manages to work in the Legend of Zelda mythos as well. Cranky Kong could be the original Donkey Kong. Over the course of three decades, the Kong family has grown by leaps and bounds. All along, one aspect of the Kong family tree has confused players as DK is actually the same ape who kidnaps Mario's lover in the arcade game. The true identity of the Donkey Kong antagonist first came into question in Donkey Kong Country, when the elderly Cranky Kong makes reference to the period of time he spent whisking maidens and tossing barrels seven days a week. The Kong's family history is so muddled that Nintendo can't even keep the timeline straight. Initially, the company stated that Cranky Kong was the original Kong from the 80s arcade game, but in the Donkey Kong Country Returns manual, it just says that Cranky Kong is Donkey Kong's grandfather. To add to the confusion, in a GBA port of Donkey Kong Country 3, the game makes it clear that Cranky Kong debuted in the fictional game Cranky Kong Country, which is definitely not Donkey Kong. The whole thing reeks of deceit, especially when one considers the fact that Mario does not age. Even though he allegedly battles three generations of Kongs, the plumber's appearance hardly changes. Frederick's form potentially has the power to read people's thoughts. In Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, Lord Frederick uses his wooden Viking horn to freeze the Kong's island. At the end of the game, DK blows the horn, which inexplicably reverts the island back into a tropical paradise. That doesn't make sense, unless your Reddit user slash you slash mark in. They believe that the horn's power is not specifically tied to climate change, instead, it takes the user's idea of paradise, then transforms the external world to match the user's vision. If your idea of paradise is a frozen wasteland, if you want a tropical island, then that's exactly what's going to materialize. Donkey Kong Country Show can be viewed as a prequel to the games. On the Donkey Kong fan blog The Jungle, there's a popular theory that suggests the animated Donkey Kong Country TV show is actually a prequel to the games. The theory relies primarily on analysis of DK mannerisms. On the show, he's as cool as a cucumber, but in the game, He's a manic banana hoarder. The change in his personality likely occurred after the magic of the crystal coconut ran out, which forced DK and his family to move from Coco Bongo Island to Kong Island. 
mad dash to build up the family's banana cash is a futile attempt to recapture the magic that was once imbued in the crystal coconut. Super Mario Odyssey might be a prequel to Donkey Kong. With the release of Super Mario Odyssey, a fascinating theory about the origin of Donkey Kong began to circulate. Part of the game takes place in New Dunk City, an urban area where all the streets are named after characters from the Donkey Kong franchise. As Mario explores the sprawling city, he is surrounded by normal-looking people who are animated in a photorealistic manner. The player soon meets Pollen, who appeared previously in the original Donkey Kong game. She is the damsel in distress that Mario has to save. In Odyssey, she's the mayor of New Donk City, which makes her a high-profile target for DK. Because of this, many players believe that Super Mario Odyssey, a prequel to the entire Mario slash Donkey Kong saga. According to the theory, DK kidnaps Poland while she's still serving as mayor, which prompts Mario to spring to her aid. DK act of terrorism eventually leads to the barrel jumping antics of the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Super Mario Odyssey explains how Donkey Kong got his name probably. An interesting theory about Super Mario Odyssey suggests that the game reveals how Donkey Kong got his admittedly silly name. Redditor slash you slash cardboard boxer notes that while the rest of the Kong clan are named after their defining traits, Chunky is big and beefy, Lanky is tall and awkward, Funky is suave and hip, Donkey is a bit of an anomaly. Because so many things in New Donk City are named after members of the Kong clan, it's very likely that Mario named Donkey Kong after the city. This is a really interesting bit of reconning that actually ties up the whole Kong series. Colin might be named after a 1930s film series. Colin might be named after a 1930s film series. There was allegedly once a war fought over Kong Island. There was allegedly once a war fought over Kong Island. Donkey Kong may have killed Mario and Luigi's father. Donkey Kong may have killed Mario and Luigi's father. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video then. Take care. Bye!